Two things are eternal constants in the human story, sex and death. In August 1665, Samuel Pepys is in a London under siege by one, whilst getting plenty of the other. Loved up after merry times at the wedding of Carteret Jr. and Lady Jemima Montague, and with Mrs. Pepys out of town, Randy Sam romps with servant girls, concerned wives, and the ever convenient Mrs. Bagwell. Let's not forget, too, a dirty dream, featuring Lady Castleman, the mistress of that number one English 17th century sex lord, Charles. No, that's not the crown jewels in my underpants, darling. It's just time for another restoration, woof woof, the second. Meanwhile, plague runs rife in the city, leaving Sam in constant fear. Please, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's time for us to travel once more back to the year 1665. Hello, are you sitting comfortably? Good, then we'll begin. I'm Tom Barclay Magic, the London storyteller. I share the stories of the people, places and personalities that have made London the finest city on earth. I'm currently sharing readings from the Diary of Samuel Pepys from the year 1665, an era with many parallels to our own. Now please, settle in and we shall begin. The 1st of August, 1665. Slept and lay long, then up, and my lord and Sir George Carteret being gone abroad, I first to see the bridegroom and bride, and found them both up, and he gone to dress himself. Both red in face, and well enough pleased this morning with their night's lodging. Thence down, and Mr Brisbane and I to billiards, Anon came my lord and Sir George Carteret in, who had been looking abroad and visiting some farms that Sir George Carteret hath thereabouts, and among other things, report the greatest stories of the bigness of the calves. They find they're ready to sell to the butchers, as big, they say, as little cows, and that they do give them a piece of chalk to lick, which they hold makes them white in flesh within. Very merry at dinner, and so to talk and laugh after dinner, and up and down, some to one place, some to another, full of content on all sides. Anon, about five o'clock, Sir George Carteret and his lady and I took coach, with the greatest of joy and kindness that could be from the two families, or that I ever saw with so much appearance, and I believe reality, in all my life. Drove hard home, and it was night ere we got to Deptford, where, with much kindness from them to me, I left them, and home to the office, where I find all well. And being weary and sleepy, it being very late, I to bed. The 6th of August, 1665, Lord's Day. Dressed, and had my head combed by my little girl, to whom I confess... Cause you're some demias, demias, demasiado kind, nuperponedo sepa mimons in su dos chose de son breast. Mais il fait que je leave it, lest it bring me to alguno major inconvenience. So to my business in my chamber, looking over and settling more of my papers than I could do over the last two days had I spent them about them. In the evening, it raining hard, down to Woolwich, where, after some little talk, to bed. The 8th of August, 1665. Up and to the office, where all the morning we sat. At noon, I home to dinner alone. And after dinner, Bagwell's wife waited at the door and went with me to my office on lequel je has to do, 
which I had a Corazon Ahaza Cornella. So parted, and I to Sir William Battens, and there sat at most the afternoon, talking and drinking too much with my Lord Brunker, Sir George Smith, George Cock, and others, very merry. I drank a little, mixed, but yet more than I should. So to my office a little late, and then to the Duke of Albemarle's about some business. The streets mighty empty all the way now, even in London, which is a sad sight. And to Westminster Hall, where talking, hearing very sad stories from Mrs Mumford, among others, of Mrs Mitchell's son's family. And poor Will, that used to sell us ale at the hall door, his wife and three children dead, all, I think, in a day. So home through the city again, wishing I may have taken no ill in going. But I will go, I think, no more thither. Late at the office and then home to supper, having taken a pullet home with me. And then to bed. The news of De Reuter's coming home is certain and told to the great disadvantage of our fleet and the praise of De Reuter. But it cannot be helped, nor do I know what to say to it. The 11th of August, 1665. Up and all day long finishing and writing over my will twice for my father and my wife. Only in the morning a pleasant rencontre happened in having a young married woman brought me by her father, old Delks, that carries pins always in his mouth to get her husband off that he should not go to sea. Une ombre pouvait avoir dans any cosa comme elle. But I did nothing sino beside her. After they were gone, my mind ran up upon having them called back again, and I sent my messenger to Blackwell, but he failed, so I lost my expectation. I to the Exchequer about striking new tallies, and I find the Exchequer by proclamation removing to none such back again and at my papers and putting my, up my books into chests and settling my house and all things in the best and speediest order I can, lest it should please God to take me away or force me to leave my house. Late up at it and weary and full of wind, finding perfectly that so long as I keep myself in company at meals and do there eat lustily, which I cannot do alone, have no love to eating, but my mind runs upon my business. I am as well as can be, but when I come to be alone, I do not eat in time, nor enough, nor with any good heart, and I immediately expect to be, begin to be full of wind, which brings me pain till I come to fill my belly a days again later. Then am presently well. The 12th of August, 1665. The people die so, that now it seems they are fain to carry the dead to be buried by daylight, the nights not sufficing to do it in. And my Lord Mayor commands people to be within at nine at night, all, as they say, that the sick may have liberty to go abroad for air. There is one also dead out of our four ships at Deptford, which troubles us mightily, the Providence fire ship, which was just fitted to go out to sea. But they tell me today no more sick on board, and this day William Bodden tells me that one is dead at Woolwich not far from the rope yard. I am told, too, that a wife of one of the grooms at court is dead at Salisbury, so that the king and queen are speedily to be all gone to Wilton. God preserve us. The 13th of August, 1665. Lord's Day. Up betimes and to my chamber, it being a very wet day all day, and glad I am that we did not go by water to see the Sovereign today, as I intended. 
clearing all matters in packing up my papers and books and giving instructions in writing to my executors, thereby perfecting the whole business of my will to my very great joy. So that I shall be in much better state of soul, I hope, if it should please the Lord to call me away this sickly time. At night to read, being weary with this day's great work, and then after supper to bed, to rise betimes tomorrow, and to bed with a mind as free as to the business of the world as if I were not worth one hundred pounds in the whole world, everything being evened under my hand in my books and papers, and upon the whole I find myself worth, besides the Brampton estate, the sum of two thousand one hundred and sixty-four pounds, for which the Lord be praised. The 14th of August, 1665. Up, and my mind being at mighty ease from the dispatch of my business so much yesterday, I down to Deptford to Sir George Carteret, where with him a great while and a great deal of private talk concerning my Lord Sandwiches and his matters, and chiefly of the latter, I giving him a great deal of advice about the necessity of his having caution concerning Fenn, and the many ways there are of, him, of his being abused by any man in his place, and why he should not bring his son to look in at, after his business, and more, to be a commissioner of the navy, which he listened to and liked, and told me how much the king was his good master, and was sure would not deny him that, or anything else greater than that. And I find him a very cunning man, whatever at other times he seems to be. And among other things, he told me that he was not for the fanfaroons to make a great show with a great title, as he might have had long since, but the main thing to get an estate, and another thing speaking of minding my business by God, says he. I will, and have already almost brought it to pass, that the king shall not be able to whip a cat, but I must be at the tail of it. Meaning, so necessary he is, and the king and my lord treasurer, and all do confess it. Which, while I mind my business, is my own case in the office of this navy, and I hope shall be more, if God give me life and health. Thence, by agreement, to Sir John Minnes's lodgings, where I find my lord Pranka, and so by water to the ferry, and there took Sir William Batten's coach that was sent for us, and to Sir William Batten's, where very merry, good cheer, and up and down the garden with great content to me. And after dinner beat Captain Cook at billiards, won about eight shillings of him, and my Lord Branca. So in the evening, after much pleasure, back again, and I by water to Woolwich, where supped with my wife, and then to bed betimes, because of rising tomorrow at four o'clock, in order to the going out with Sir George Carteret towards Cramborne to meet my Lord Hinchingbrook in his way to court. This night I did present my wife with a diamond ring, a while since given to me by Mr. Dick, Dick Vine's brother, for helping him to be the purser, valued at about ten pounds, the first thing of that nature I did ever give her. Great fears we have that the plague will be great in the bill this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to add your comments, like and subscribe. Cheerio!